Good evening, night owls. I was uh, going to discuss some aspects of chronotherapy, but I realized that typing out the description, what I was going to say, would take a long time and a lot of typing. And I was kind of inspired by Drs. Ronenberg and Merrow of the uh, Coursera course. Dr. Merrow in particular liked to draw these uh, diagrams of circadian rhythms and explain what was going on with the with reference to the drawing and uh, I thought that might be an easier way a picture is worth a thousand words so I thought that might be an easier way to explain uh, what I was going to talk about uh, talking about chronotherapy and the risk of developing N24 and before I go any further I want to say that as far as we know today, any, any type of chronotherapy is quite risky for developing N24. So I would urge anyone not to do it and to be quite cautious. Um, nevertheless, there are some interesting possibilities of why some forms may be riskier than others. And uh, due to some discussion on the night owl list, I thought I might... Uh, talk about that. Uh, it's, it's some a good case being made that some forms may be safer or riskier than others. What I have here are two examples of uh, chronotherapy. Chronotherapy is delaying your sleep around the clock. If you have delayed sleep phase syndrome, delaying it around the clock until you end up in a better phase position as a cure for or a treatment for uh, delayed sleep phase syndrome. Now, over here on this this diagram, we show someone who initially is getting up at noon. Their a goal is to get up at 6 a.m. To do that, they delay an hour a day over a period of around 18 days until they get into the right alignment, and then they stabilize that. Now, what we show here, these horizontal lines are the person's time asleep. The little X's are the minimum of the body's temperature rhythm, which is an index of the circadian rhythm of the body. Now, what we see here happening is, in the original state, a person is sleeping at getting up regularly at noon. The minimum of temperature is somewhat in the second half of the sleep period. It can be in the middle towards the end, generally somewhere in the second half. Now, the person starts delaying. The temperature rhythm doesn't quite that the the temperature rhythm doesn't quite follow because it it, it, it follows but it lags a bit. The reason for that is the person is delaying an hour a day, even with someone with DSPS who has a longer than 24 hour period, it's rarely longer than 24.5 uh, hours, the intrinsic period. So their temperature rhythm will start delaying maybe a half hour a day. And so it, it delays and it, it eventually starts, joins up and due to the pressure of the light enhancing the delay, it eventually syncs up with the delaying uh, sleep pattern. So the two kind of follow in a in a synchronized pattern. They're they're entrained to each other. That is to say. Now then the person stabilizes in their new sleep schedule. Now and then the 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 temperature also eventually stabilizes as well. Now there's a couple of things to notice. One is that in the stable phase before before entrainment the temperature uh, minimum is in the second half of the sleep period. During the process of chronotherapy, it tends to shift over to the first half because it's lagging behind the change of the sleep cycle. Um, the important thing about this diagram is this. If you were to block out the the rest of this diagram and just look at this this portion of the diagram this portion of the diagram is identical both in terms of the sleep and in terms of the temperature is identical 
to the rhythm of someone with non 24 hour sleep wake cycle disorder. The person is temporarily in the same state as someone with non 24 hour sleep wake cycle disorder. Now, the problem with that, or the risk of that, is you may not stabilize here. You may keep going, the, the sleep may keep delaying, and then you've gotten yourself into a potentially much worse disorder than delayed sleep phase syndrome, which is bad enough. <laughs> um, you got yourself into non 24 hour sleep wake cycle disorder. The reason it tends to perpetuate, there are several reasons, and there may be other reasons we don't yet understand. Um, one is shown in animal studies when you entrain an animal to a non 24 hour period, as, hap as happens in this, in this middle section here the intrinsic period, the basic period of the circadian cycle, um, it, it adapts to that, um, to that period and happens fairly quickly. And once it adapts to that, it resists changing back to a 24 hour period. It, it makes it more difficult. Uh, the other factor, you notice I mentioned the, the um, temperature being in the minimum being in the second half over here in the first half over here. Uh, that's significant because if it's in the second half, the temperature uh, uh, rhythm is phase advanced by light occurring after it. And in the normal situation, you only have to wait maybe a couple of hours, maybe three or four, until you get light. That helps you keep in a, in a, on a steady rhythm. When you get into this period, this, this pattern, which, as I said, resembles that of a non-24 person. The um, temperature minimum is very close to the beginning of the sleep, instead of closer to the end where it should be. So there's really no light exposure for many, many hours after the temperature minimum. So there's nothing to phase advance the sleep. And there's lots of light just before, because the person is awake until maybe an hour or two, or maybe even right up to the point of the minimum. So there's lots of light before the minimum, which keeps pushing, pushing it later and later. So once you get into this pattern, you got several forces that are pushing you, pushing this pattern to continue. Now, and some, you know, some people are able to break out of it and stabilize, but um, a lot of people aren't, probably due to a number of factors that vary with the individual that we don't fully understand. Maybe their length of their intrinsic period to begin with, the flexibility of it, many, many factors, but, but you have a great risk that this pattern will perpetuate because this, this is an N24 pattern in here. If, if you, you know, if you saw this graph and you didn't see these parts, you'd say, wow, ah, that's, that's a person with N24. The, the, the temperature rhythm is way here at the beginning, the, and the, you know, you've got a constant delay of an hour a day, that's N24 and it, it tends to perpetuate itself. Now, we haven't talked yet about the diagram on this side. This is also chronotherapy, but done in a different way. It, there may be less risk of N24 with this, but I do want to again emphasize, this is in theoretical, it's based on some people's experiences. Um, I would I, I would credit one particular person, but for privacy's sake, I don't. I, I would won't do that unless he asks me to. Um, this this might be safer for some people, but that's only theoretical and based on you know very few examples, and so I wouldn't recommend it. But this is a theoretical discussion to explain the possible the reason why some people doing this have been able to do it safely and not have the problems that ha happen with this type of of, uh, of chronotherapy. Again, I don't, I'm not recommending it, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to analyze why, why some people get in trouble doing it and why some don't. In this case, also, the person is originally sleeping at noon and has the aim of eventually getting up at 6 a.m. So they also want to do an 18 hour delay. But instead of doing a slow one hour per day delay, they delay, in this case, four and a half hours 
per day. So within four days, they're around the clock to where they want to be. They they're they're they they're they're here sleeping at noon, and that you know one day they're getting up at noon, the next day they're getting up at 4:30. That, you know, the next day they're getting up at nine, so they're they're really rapidly delaying their sleep, and you have to really push yourself to stay awake to do this. It's not easy to do. Um, at least, you know, I, I I haven't used this method, but from what I've I've been told, it, it and just just intuitively, um, it's hard. Um, but you 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 go around the, the the clock very quickly. Now, watch what happens with the temperature rhythm because something quite different happens. The temperature rhythm as in someone with DSPS would might typically have an intrinsic period of say 24 and a half hours. It, it could vary. It varies. There's, there's, there's a variation of that. It might even, uh, you know, but but usually not not huge variation. Delaying four and a half hours a day is much more it, then the temperature rhythm can manage. That's called it's out what they call outside of its range of entrainment. So when you start delaying this rapidly, your temperature rhythm can't keep up with the delay. It you become what is technically known as internally desynchronized. You um, your 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 body clock and your sleep wake cycle no longer are in phase with each other. They're operating independently of each other. Now so what you see happening is, and once once internal desynchronization occurs, the the temperature rhythm just starts to follow its own internal logic, its own internal clock, and so it will it will probably cycle at around a 24.5 or so hour uh, period, which means it'll delay slowly. It'll delay, but very slowly. So you got the sleep shifting suddenly to this over four days to this new this new regimen but you've got the temperature rhythm can't keep up so it 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 slowly delays and it eventually it eventually catches up with the sleep and then eventually after many days gets in the same phase position occurring this during the second half of the night eventually gets into the same phase position after many days um, but in the meantime, you've got this pattern. Now, in contrast, as I said before, this, when you block this out, this is the pattern of an N24 person, and it tends to perpetuate itself for the reasons that I mentioned. There really is no N24 pattern here. Yes, this is a non-24 hour um, jump of the sleep cycle, but the temperature rhythm is not doing that. The two are not entrained together. They're not operating in synchrony, which is the problem. This, when they're out of sync like this, the the organism is not in. This organism is entrained to a non 24-hour day. This organism is not entrained. It is temporarily desynchronized before it gets entrained to again to a 24-hour cycle. It's temporarily desynchronized. There's no N24 type pattern. Um, the, there's, there's, as I say, this state of internal desynchronization. This, this, this. There's nothing to um, perpetuate because this, this, this sleep cycle, this change of the sleep cycle, does not perpetuate on its own. You have to force yourself to get up um, four hours later each day. You have to force yourself to do that. This, you don't really have to force yourself once you get into this cycle, and that's the danger because. If you have DSPS, your body will will like this cycle, and will want to perpetuate it. This cycle, there's no there's no mechanism to want to perpetuate it. The the the, the sleep shifts, the temperature cycle just becomes totally independent of the sleep. It's it's way over here. The sleep is way over here. The two, that's for a while, have nothing to do with each other. Eventually, they match up. But in the interim, they kind of had nothing to do with each other for a while. And so there's no non-24 hour pattern to perpetuate. The, the animal experiments that I mentioned before showing that this perpetuates itself because of the change in the, in the intrinsic period, they do not apply to this case. 
Um, the, the fact that I mentioned that because the temperature is occurring in the temperature minimum is occurring in the first half of the sleep uh, cycle it doesn't get the it gets light at the wrong time that's not a factor over here the 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 sleep is shifted over here the temperature rhythm is is occurring in the in the middle of the day when the person is awake it's it's getting light before and after it's essentially just free running for a time for a period there's there's nothing to perpetuate the problem as there is over here and so it may be that doing chronotherapy in this way incurs less risk of N24 than doing it this way, delaying 4.5 hours a day, or you know, it could be four or five. And this is this versus one. The um, original paper on chronotherapy used three hours. Um, they they were kind of lucky that they did because they did that based on knowledge of the time which turns out to be incorrect they thought the normal human period was 25 hours and that people with DSPS might have a 26 hour period and they wanted it to be a little longer than that uh, that turned out to be a uh, uh, those turned out to be false conclusions but they nevertheless used three hours which probably is a uh, well it's certainly safer than one hour um, so that's probably why in the initial paper the the five people they studied didn't develop N24 although it's a small sample maybe they maybe there just wasn't weren't enough to to for someone to develop N24 but but three hours is certainly safer than a one hour delay um, what happens in, what happened in subsequent years after that paper is a lot of people started doing the doing this kind of one hour delay chronotherapy and that causes uh, a lot of trouble. This type might be safer. I still don't recommend it because we don't know, you know, I'm, I'm giving a kind of a theoretical case, but we don't know enough. There might be factors that we don't know where this could be for many people still a problem. But there is, you know, this is more of a theoretical discussion. There's some reason to think that this could be a safer way. And, uh, Okay, I think I said all I needed to say. I hope I didn't forget anything. This is a, kind of an impromptu video. I've never done this before, uh, and I just set it up on the spur of the moment because it's act, uh, not for any gr great uh, cinematic reason, but just because I thought it actually would be easier than it's easier for me to talk than to type. So, um, and it's easier for me to draw than to explain. So I thought I would uh, give that a shot. Anyway, I hope this is uh, helpful. Thank you.